money bro and i'm gonna get some of it you know so you know the tone is a uh, the tone gear i've been I, I swear by aguilar i've been using their pedals more and more recently although i just got a new uh sans amp or i've had a sans amp for two or three years now and it's from new york city that i've been loving it's giving me that beastie boys tone that i fucking just love yeah, yeah. you know like, <laughs> it, like it makes it all gnarly and then the in this in the studio the red DI or the red eye, the red DI or whatever. I've used at Jim Rolls at, at Darren James's place. Uh, he has the equivalent of a, he has the SVT VR going through four tens. And the SVT VR is kind of a 71 through 73 or something like that. A uh, period when the SVT made a really kind of super growly uh, tube amp. And I got hip to that by the, uh, the bass player from Funk Intelligence and Mayor Hathorn. Joe, Joe Abrams told me about, he's like, when you go, because I did a lot of touring in Europe, you know. And when I was in Europe, he was like, they're going to try and give you some bass amps. I always go SVT VR. And it's got like three knobs on it. It's like, it has bass boost, triple boost. And there's like three little, three knobs and three little buttons. And like, the thing is just simple and rocking. Yeah. So I learned about the SVT. I mean, Tone is, you know, tone is tone. Like I, I, uh, I stopped being so much of a gearhead when I realized that I just wanted my shit to work so I could go to work. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I, the the MacPods first five years, I think I blew up ten amps, maybe more. I blew up the guy from Twin Cat. I was like, we'd open up for a band, and I'd blow up their amp, and then they'd be like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm such a dick. I was so like, I was just young and stupid. And so after having done that long enough, that's when I got with Aguilar, who basically just makes indestructible gear. There's a, they have the, all their stuff's all lightweight now too. So like the, I got a seven, I got another head that's tinier and sweeter, but I just love my AG500. I, asked, I called Marco, I was like, I want another one. He's like, we don't even make that anymore. Yeah. I'm like, wow, cool. So as far as my gear goes, you know, I got an old crate. Old you know, crate. Check this out. No, I got an old crate here in the closet. Um, if I can uh, figure out how to turn this thing around, yeah. If you look in there, the old crate in there, and there's some, you know, my this is the old gear closet. But there's, I got amps in my closet for days. Yeah, always have extra. Amps. They're actually they're they're not they're not extra. They're hooked up. So oh, when I have okay. rehearsal, I just okay, yeah. I just use them for rehearsal in here. You know what I mean for my for my room in here. I have a. I've got a bass amp and a, a guitar amp and a PA and a drum set in here in case we have to have, you know, rehearsals if we ever play gigs again. Yeah, cool. Well, I have some other questions, but I, do, do you have a bass that's playable in that room right now? I mean, I can go, tra I can go track one down. Yeah, I have, uh, you want to play a little game? A little game yeah, we can, okay. we can play a game. A man's got a little game to play. Wicked, I'm not letting you outside. My dog wants to go outside. I'm not letting him outside. <laughs> it's all rainy out there. It is rainy. It's cold, getting cold. Here we go again, you know. All right. I got an acoustic bass. Is that cool? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. This is basically, it's, it's a, I just started trying to mix some things up because I have a lot of the same questions. Of course, the answers are different, but I have similar questions. But I started throwing in this game, and especially with musicians like you, it kind of just shows the diversity uh, the musician can have, where I can just throw something random at you by chance, and yeah. you can make it Sunday. So uh, it's a game called Spin the Wheel. Let me get my music stand out. Yeah. Yep. So I have this wheel. It's got uh, seven numbers on it. Yeah. So there, those are the seven uh, notes in a key. But uh, we'll think of it harmonized and tri tri harmonized basically. It doesn't be triads, but so I'll, I'll spin it. Whatever, if it gets a one, then have you pick a key first. What key do you want to do? Let's do D minor. Okay, so as for the wheel, I'm just going to relate it back to F major. 
All right, you got it. Yep. Okay, so uh, I'm going to spin. So whatever we get, that'll be the first chord, and we'll have you create a, a piece or an improvisation out of – we'll do a four-chord progression. All right. Here we go. Van and White level shit. Yeah. Oh, I, you almost started with the seven chord. Okay, so start. we start with the D minor. That's good. I told you. So D, Yeah, okay. So chord number one. And basically, you can make these even measures or – just the, it's a progression. So, like chord number two, seven, seven, seven. Oh, ooh, major or minor. I don't know yet. Yes, yeah, so we'll do the three chord in F. So yeah. We'll get a minor, right? F, yeah, G A minor. All right. I would like to hear that seven in there. I think it would sound cool. And we're going to get the, yes. Yes. All right, cool. D minor, A minor. And we're, we're in the key of F, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, one more chord. Six, three, seven, four. Come on. good right yeah yeah very cool and that's what I you, didn't, can do, you can take a random chord yeah. progression you can do eight million things with it so you can just practice forever on one simple idea. i love spinning the wheel is sweet because those chord changes are sweet yeah what i i know that when i compose i tend to get into ruts so if i just force myself to do whatever it gives me then i have yeah. to compose differently yeah i like having that diminished in there because i knew you'd do some cool stuff with that <laughs> And then B flat. Yeah. Is it a B flat seven or is it B flat major seven? Uh, made major seven for the four. Yeah. Yeah. I was playing a dominant, but. But you can go in. Uh, you, uh, yeah. you of all people are great at going in and out. You're, You're right about that, yeah. man. <laughs> well, it's the uh, colors, man. It's like, yep. you know, in, our, in uh, our culture, we only have 12 notes. So eventually you're going to find the right one. Yep. Yep, it's usually pretty close too. All right, well, well, I, I got a question for you, man. Is yeah, that sure? How how has Simkali pushed you to play with the major and minor keys in a way that our, you know, like as a as a student of the West, playing in a band where those rules don't necessarily apply, because like. Well, a new a noob has like a lot of different you know like a lot of those different scales kind of break the mold of uh how we hear yep and so how have how has that uh progressed your thinking towards uh the composition well basically like well the thing that was confusing to me at first was they would say it's in c but so i if, if somebody says it's in c i think well major or minor would be my first question but it could be anything c it would be, is, is an a flat for everybody else yeah yeah so I, I just say okay well what are, I, what are the notes in the in the uh the rag or the scale and i see it now as like ma like in western music we have the major and the minor so and we get a mix of them but you break them down generally happy and sad right but yeah like, with the with the changing of the notes in there you can get well i'm happy but i'm a little i miss my my uh i miss my uh my friend and maybe it's cold out in uh or I, I'm I'm a little drunk, and 
I'm a little sad, but I'm also kind of happy because I'm watching my favorite show. Whatever. That's that was a stupid analogy, but you get no, also, you're you get right. It's the middle, middle, <sighs> middle spots in the mood. That's uh, that's kind of how I feel about it too. Is that I didn't realize that there were so many different ways to skin the proverbial musical cat. Yeah. Like a you know a scale that's different in the second second octave, for instance. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Like I didn't know that that was like I never even thought about it uh it being a possibility until we started playing with some colleague when they would be like, well, no, this scale m- means that you play the first half of it minor and the second half of it major. Yeah. And you're like, what the, f- what the front door is that about? You know what I mean? Like, but it, it, like you said, it kind of, it expresses more moods than uh, a tradition. I mean, our, our societies, you know, that kind of music is only three or 400 years old at best. And the Indian music is like so much older that they're able to just, it, what I think I attribute it to the length of their, uh, their history of their like the the sounds they've just been at it for so long that they like just recognize emotion and they're like when we start the song it's sad and low but when we end the song it's high and happy and that's why that's that word yeah yeah there's some tunes where the it's it's a major or a minor third in the beginning but the end you're supposed to tease the major third right stuff like that where it, it expresses an emotion that could be from a society that came 3000 years it's like that could that could be a trick that's 2000 years old yeah I'm glad, babe. 
So glad.